According to the National Center for Victims of Crime, one in five girls and one in 20 boys is a victim of child sexual abuse. Take him to the place Watch dead things live again We're one touch of his grace And it's all washed away He's calling out your name Doesn't matter where you've been Or whatever you have faced Don't be afraid Take him to the play. As a member of the Grammy and Dove Award winning The Crab Family, Aaron Crab and his beautiful wife Amanda are loved by gospel music fans around the world. Their love for God and their family has taken them from Grammy and Dove Awards to a new place of restoring hope for the brokenhearted. This is their story of unshakable faith. This is today's life. Amanda and Aaron, it is so good to see you. Good to see good you to too. Good to see you, good to be with you. Tell me about Take Him to the Place. What was behind that song? Well, the song Take Him to the Place um, is my testimony song. And actually, you'll remember, we were in Israel with Pastor John Hagee and we sat at a table at dinner. It was the first time that you and I had officially met. <laughs> and I don't know how conversation led, but you and I began to talk and I shared my testimony with you. And that day after we had shared and um, you kind of inspired me, you, you encouraged me to write and you know, your testimony needs to be heard. And although I had been sharing it in conferences and places like that. I will never forget, we were at the Welling Wall the next day and I wrote on the paper, Lord, I'm ready to be creative for your glory again. And when I backed away from that wall, the lyrics to the song, Take Him to the Place, began flooding my soul. And for the next couple hours, I walked around in Israel with my phone, just, you know, typing out the lyrics. And yeah, we were the bus captains, so we were supposed <laughs> to be in the front. And here's yeah. Amanda in oh, the back. Yeah typing away, you know. <laughs> yeah, and he was like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm writing a song. And um, he remembers the first time that I began to sing him what the Lord had given. He just, he began to weep because we lived it. Absolutely. We lived this testimony. I lived it a lot longer, but he lived a portion of it too. It comes from um, a place of pain and yet a place of victory. Um, I was sexually abused beginning at the age of five and carried on until I was about nine from different men in my life. And um, the one thing that was the common thread was you can't ever tell. So the enemy had placed a gag order on my life. Mm. I carried that into my teenage years, um, covered up with shame and defeat. I felt dirty. Um, I felt like it was my fault that I had done something wrong had I been different. Um, and not only that, if the Lord loved me and he is all seeing and all knowing, then where was he? Mm -hmm. And that was a question that I carried. I was raised in church. Um, one of my abusers in particular went to church with me. So I must be different. The Lord must not care about me like he cares about everybody else. Um, so I hid this dark, deep pain, didn't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. didn't tell anybody. And so when I met him, we met, we were 19 years old, we were babies. Um, the enemy taunted me and tormented me and said, he will never love you if he truly knows what happened to you, where you have been, what you have done, and therefore you can't tell him. So the gag order continued on into my marriage and um, after about two years of marriage, mm -hmm. and he can go back now and go, I can see Mm -hmm. where there were questions and where, you know, he couldn't put all the pieces together. 
um, traveling around with the crab family, the enemy would say, look at you traveling around in ministry. You see everybody else get their victories and their breakthroughs, but you will never have it because you can't come clean. Mm. You can't tell. Your husband doesn't even know who you are, but you can't tell him. Mm. It was a constant war in my soul. And in August of 2003, we were um, in Central City, Kentucky. The Crab family was sound checking. The bus was backed up behind the stage. And it's an outside concert um, that about 3,000 people come in attendance every year. And the music was so loud and I knew that I was the only person on the bus that day. And I screamed out to God with everything that I had. And I, I said, God, if you don't do something in my life, I'm going to leave him because I would rather walk away <laughs> and not feel the pain of rejection because I already had so much bitterness and hurt and anger and frustration that I didn't want to add rejection on top of that because he couldn't love me. I already had that in my mind from the seeds of the enemy. He couldn't love me. So I screamed and said, God, if you don't do something, I'm out. And you know, the awesome thing about God is that when you get to a place of true desperation in Him, He will do supernatural things. Amen. And that day He um, sent a lady, I walked off the bus, walked about 50 feet to the product table, was going to do my job. Mm. And this little lady came up and she said, I need to speak with you. Rana Sipes. Rana. And um, I said, okay. I didn't know her, she didn't know me. And when I said, okay, she said, no, we need to go privately and have a conversation. And I said, okay. So I followed her about a block back behind an, a nursing home in Central City, Kentucky. And we sat on an embankment. And she began to tell me everything about my life that I had never spoken to mm -hmm. another human being. God sent an agent of hope to my rescue. Mm -hmm. That place of desperation, that bitterness of soul that I was crying out, mm -hmm. and He sent someone to meet me there. Mm -hmm. And I laid in her lap and I wept for over two hours and she just stroked my hair for the first time. I didn't have to say a word. I didn't have to confess anything. God knew it all. Mm. And that was his way of saying, I've been there the whole time. I watched your hurt. I watched the pain. I watched your fear. And now my glory is going to be seen through it. And she said, now that you have emptied yourself of all of that junk, I'm going to pray that God fills every crack and every crevice. And boy, mm -hmm. our life at that point forever was changed. The power of God consumed me in a way that I never knew possible. And the minute he saw me, he said, what has happened to you? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This boldness of, of just prayer and um, seeking the Lord. And I spent literally um, six months in a prayer closet. And anytime I would fear um, him, you know, wanting to leave or someone finding out, I would go and I would lay in my prayer closet. And after about six months, um, I told him everything. There was a healing that came and I shared everything with him. And um, God has been faithful every step of the way. You know, it's so good to see you. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Are you hurting? Are you hanging on to shame and guilt? Take Jesus to that place and let him restore your broken heart so that you can share your unshakable faith with others and give him glory. This is today's life. I'll see you next week.